Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel, guys. In this video today, we are back at it, trading NBA cards. And today, guys, the trading strategy, the trading lesson, if you like, or the old move that I've pulled from out my sleeve here is one that I've done many a times in football. And like I've said in all these videos, guys, if you haven't caught any of them, they'll be linked in the playlist. It's in the description of this video. But all these trading techniques are tried and tested methods that I've used on the football side of things. And I've really enjoyed using those old moves Again, in the NBA side of things, and like I say at the beginning of every one of these videos, guys, because the NBA is just so immune from so many of the asterisks that go into the so rare football market, the examples are nice, clean cut, and I can show you a great way of how to, you know, trade around the market for different objectives and for a lot of different reasons. In this episode today, the old trick I'm pulling from out my sleeve is getting rewards to bail me out of trouble at any point in the video today, guys. If you do laugh, you learn, you like something, please do like and subscribe to the channel. We are growing at an untold velocity and we are getting our way towards 10,000 subs. Let me know your thoughts on the players I've traded out and the players I've traded in. If I made a gaffe, if I made a mistake, if I overvalued, undervalued, I'm always going to be really interested to hear your take on it from the actual, especially if you're an NBA fan, the actual basketball perspective of it. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. Now, we're almost at the end of this trading sequence, so you will no longer hear me bemoan the day one auction overpay that I did on so many cards. And when I was evaluating my roster, I was evaluating my gallery to undertake these trades and start to reform my club. Like I mentioned in the last video, it was all about getting groups of cards together that coupled into an amount that I could go into the market with and trade against for targets that I'd identified to bring in. And this bundle of cards was one that included a lot of day one auctions that I picked up and I paid way over the odds for. Number one, the biggest overpay I think I made in the early auctions was limited Marcus Smart, five of 5,000, as you can see him here, in his full glory, his lovely dyed green hair, that lovely Boston Celtic shirt, super happy to get him in, former Defensive Player of the Year, but I must admit, um, when it was five of 5,000, I did kind of underestimate the whole of 5,000 part, and I still had limited football in my head, uh, so as you can see on day one auctions, man, I paid a staggering 0.14 of an Ethereum um, for a limited Marcus Smart. So this was one of the huge loss uh, leaders that I had uh, in the gallery. And, you know, it just pained me to look at him and see how much I'd paid for him. It was an absolute nightmare. He did help me win some limiteds. He was pretty good for me, it must be said. Um, I overpaid him so much and I obsessed about it quite early on in my NBA journey that I actually went out and bought a rare Marcus Smart. And I actually did so well on the price for that that it made me feel better inside. You know, I got him for one of the cheapest prices he's probably went for, 0.0659 Ethereum, which is not too far off a day one auction as well. It was number 11 of 1,000, so quite an early mint. And um, yeah, so I felt that how low I got this for, especially when he was kind of up in his averages, when he was, was up at like 0.11 and stuff like that. I felt, oh, do you know what? Maybe I've maybe just about got out of that clean by doing the rainbow, by taking up a stack on him. But uh, alas, it still did bug me and I couldn't get away from it. And I probably do want another Marcus Smart back in the club at some point, being a Celtics player and with the green hair and all that cool stuff. But he, th these two Marcus Smarts, along with Kyle Lowry, who again was another huge, look at that, five of 5,000. These number fives, I was just buying them like a madman, it turns out. Um, this is Kyle Lowry. I paid 0.0736 Ethereum for it. He's never been really above 0.015 ever since. So a huge, huge one uh, on, on the old... Uh, <laughs> on the old sheet, as it were. And he's been kind of decent. He's not been great for me. But in turn, throughout playing this game with a lot of the other cards that you've seen me trade away thus far and some of the ones that are featured in this video, I have won, and will be including in this trade, Drew Eubanks rare. Now, when I picked this guy up, he was like a tier four, a tier five rare, was worth bugger all. But as you can see, he did have some spikes of being good on the L10, and some people were very much after him. So he managed to gather a bit of market value, a bit of market attention around the time of me doing this trade. Same with Damian Lee. Again, a tier four, tier five rare reward that was worth bugger all, but then started to pick up some form and started to have a market uh, for the L10 side of things, for contender and whatever else. Had some really good scores to boot on top of that. And the other rare reward I got, Chris Butcher, 
he came into this as well to help pay for my sins with my, my day one auctions. And again, tier, I think he might have actually been a tier three rare. I think he might have been the best rare I won. And I think I did get a tier three. So I think he was actually kind of decent when I got him. Um, and yeah, he did get a good bit of form with me as well. So I think I did see a bit of an increase on him going from about 30 odd quid when I won him up to about 65, 70 quid or so. So those were the main ones in there. And then the the values, I was looking around, what other rewards do I have that could maybe help this? Now, Stephen Adams wasn't worth very much as a limited card or Brooks Lopez, but both of these guys, I know from playing them, are very good basketball players and very useful. So even though their limited card value isn't actually much on the market, the profile that these guys carry, any prospective person I'm trading them to, are probably going to take them off me in the hope that they, they can 2x in value in the limited side of things if they get a good L10 position arrive. Or even if they wanted to use them themselves, these are actually good basketball players despite their value. And the cumulative total, the current SRD value of all those cards when I bundled them together, got me to around a quarter of an Ethereum. Now, that's also roughly the amount I paid for my 0.14 limited smart, my rare smart, and my Lowry. It's all around about a quarter of an Ethereum for the actual ETH that I paid out. The money that I took out my pocket or out my so rare wallet and spent on those three cards is now kind of the same value as those like seven cards. But the other ones, I didn't pay anything for them. I won them as rewards. And that's how these rewards are going to help bail me out because I've overpaid for stuff being an idiot. And then the rewards I've won by playing the game well, I'm using them to get me out of jail in this instance. And as I've mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of rookie cards, especially in this year one edition. And I think numero uno on anyone's hit list would have to be, particularly when he is floating around that quarter of an Ethereum mark, 0.25, is Paolo Banchero. So he was the guy I had earmarked to go after for this trade. So I did the exact same tactics that we've did in every one of these videos so far. I got my little bundle together. There was a few other cards kind of rolling around in it as well, as you can see here, guys like Colin Sexton, Jared Allen, Andrew Wiggins, a few other guys that were kind of knocking around potentially. This was my first kind of salvo of bids before I really kind of uh, got the packs together, the, you know, the trading packs that I've made, as it were. Um, and yeah, we're just attacking the floor. Every Banchero rare that's listed on the floor, I'm sending the same offer. Kobe here, he rejects the first offer we make. I make this offer here to uh, King Dalek, and I cancel it because I think I've, go, I've went somewhere else for an offer. G Cornelius, we've sent him this offer as well. He's rejected it. And then we found MY2P on the rare floor for Banchero a couple of days later. And again, we sent him the offer. He rejected it. Got into a bit of a counter offer kind of situation. I rejected his counter offer. I then sent him this back at him, trying to throw in some other cards that weren't initially in this bundle. Again, he rejects it. And when you get an account coming back and you enter into, I think we exchange maybe one or two counter offers between each other. I just get that sense that this deal is very close to happening and I just need to make the right combination of cards. And then he came back me with a counter offer of his own. And this is what he basically asked for the bundle that I'd itemized to you. All those rewards, plus the guys I'd overpaid on day one, and he wanted to send me the Paolo Panchero. I graciously accepted his counter offer, and we welcomed into the club 111 of a thousand rookie year one edition Paolo Banchero in his full glory. Banchero's value on that day was 0.267 of an Ethereum and the offer I sent him on that day was worth 0.28. So a little under 10% of a premium. But again, I'm giving away a lot of rares here, a lot of good valuable SO5 cards. And that's why I've not had to trade against as much of a premium. Now the averages on the cards I gave over to, the, to, to this gentleman here, my 2P, uh, is held kind of firm around that level. Whereas Banchero today is falling much in price. So I'm now thinking, crap, I could have maybe held off a little bit and maybe now traded for a Banchero and maybe held on to a few of these guys. So even though at the time I feel that like I did well, snapshotting a trade like we're doing right now and in an immediate point in time where now that the Banchero's at 0.175 and the floor over here, maybe it looks like today I didn't do that great. Whereas at the time I was absolutely buzzing about it. But when I went and examined it further, it is a bit of an L10-itis situation. And when I look at ban Banchero's L10, he's about to lose a 48 off of it. So I could very quickly see this guy's price rebounding over the next like week or two. 
the next game week or so. Because as soon as he becomes L10 exciting again, if he gets under L10 of 33, 32 especially, then, you know, his value will return to the kind of position, at the very least, that I was trading it against. And I've kind of, you know, I've still got the guy I want. It's a year one rookie. It's Paolo Banchero. It's the man that is. And it's kind of a point we made in the last videos. It's all about the specific targets that you're going after and having that ruthless aggression to keep going after the floor and making the trade. As well as, like, every trade I've done in these videos, I hope you would agree, They've been quite fairly balanced. There's not been a clear winner or loser, I don't think. You know, I don't think I'm giving over too much. I think I'm getting a great asset in and I'm giving away a lot of questionable items. But there's enough questionable items there where the other person who's trading in the market finds it as an enticing offer. So we've added in in the last few videos Tyrese Halliburton, Alpin Sengun, and now Paolo Banchero. The jigsaw is coming together. The squad is being assembled, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. Stay tuned for more. Like, subscribe, share, retweet. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.